There are volumes of love and there's volumes of despair in one setting. Victims, uh, loved ones, relatives of political assassinations. Meshadiyat, Marwan Ahmadi, both surviving car bombings. Rasha Al Amir, Monica Borgman, Lukman's widow. Uh, across, you have Kamal Mruwe's son, Malik Mruwe. You have Michelle Mawad, Renee Mawad's son. You have seated plenty of diplomats that have just arrived listening to the same speeches that have been told over and over and over. These speeches get better over time too. It's because they're not done once or twice. There have been so many assassinations and there have been so many people making speeches at these assassinations that they come back and they say the same thing. They improve the language each time. There's no final draft. It's just a continuously edited uh, improvement. The words are great and there's a lot of love in these rooms. There's a lot of mourning and there's a lot of bonding. Um, but there's also the sad reality that there's no answer to this problem in Lebanon, period. And people listen, people share their feelings, people mourn, people express hope. New MPs make promises, old ministers make promises for the future. New faces representing October 17 demand the same desire. It's the same thing. Uh, this goes nowhere. There's no local option for Hezbollah. Period. There's no security challenge to that group's security. If one exists one day, it'll be very violent and it'll lead to the permanent breakdown of, of this country. It'll lead to the permanent fracturing, cantonization, separation of communities and an ugly, an ugly version of divorce. That's not on the horizon right now, but that could happen down the road. And without local answers, I think the solutions left to Lebanese are simply to accept the status quo and deal with Hezbollah. I don't think that is the right path forward. That is a complete disservice and it's a dishonoring of everyone that paid that price. It throws Lebanon away. But when that's the only option left and people seek power in this country in any any way, um, they end up becoming default, not allies, but they work with the system they're given. And commemorations will continue and these words will be shared endlessly. But we can also maybe accept at this point that without international robust engagement with Iran that finds some way for them to exit this country once and for all without that appetite and while things are moving in the opposite direction which is stabilization of Lebanon under Iranian hegemony you're left with a country that simply can no longer exist the way people want it to it's an it's a permanently ungovernable country that kind of despair is in the room too and it's an equal measure. You have love, you have doom. And it's just a reminder of why trying to shelve that issue later while trying to gain favors by that group, by endlessly compromising with that group, you end up in a situation where that group is fully in charge and you're left with no options but to accept their status quo. And that status quo is hell. I don't think Lebanese will permanently accept this status quo, but the way it ends is ugly. And that's the reminder in the room. People that paid the ultimate price, so many that died because of that group's security assertions, and the reality that not one of Hezbollah's hitmen will be arrested or face any punishment for what they've done. Joe Bajani's wife as well, speaking over video, also reminding us in her way, without saying it directly, but indirectly, that even when you're approaching the port blast investigation, when you're approaching the port blast in itself, when you're documenting 
the recklessness of that ammonium nitrate storage, you also get killed. And there's no shot in hell that those killers that took Joba Jani's life will ever face any time. In prison, will never be arrested. They're going to live free. That's the story. And I think it speaks volumes.